Hello everyone, Rain here with Audio Plugin Deals. Today we have another deal to bring you, this time from Nomad Factory's Essential Studio Suite. This bundle contains nine plugins for essential mixing and mastering effects. So the only thing to do before we get right into it is to make sure that you hit like, subscribe, and also turn on notifications so that you can always know the second that one of these deals goes live. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so let's get right into looking at this bundle then. So as you can see here, we have a few plugins open. These are the ones I had on the master channel. And we'll get back to those later, but you can see we have this vintage retro aesthetic, and there's also the style that they're going for with the sounds of the plugins as well. So we can begin by having a look at some of the individual layers within this track that I've prepared to show off the plugin. So I started with a loop. Loop-based production isn't usually what I do, but in this case, I just thought, why not? Let's go for it. So I picked out this nice little guitar sample, and we can listen to this with nothing on it. There we go, pleasant little guitar melody. Now, I wanted to start shaping the sound a bit more, and so of course, we have to use EQ, the staple of any mix. And so we've brought up the eGraphic EQ, which is the essential tool for equalization. You can adjust the width of the bands here. And then, of course, the gain of each band. Simple as you like. So we can have a listen to what it sounds like with a little bit of this shaping. And what I did with this particular one was I wanted to make the sample sound a little bit more lo-fi. So you can see I've really aggressively rolled off the high end here. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. Bypass. So, in terms of getting that lo-fi sound, it's definitely uh, squashing down and doing what we want it to there. And later on, you'll hear that that helps it fit in with a couple of the other layers a little bit better. The other thing that we wanted to look at then was the tube saturation, our uh, tube and tape saturation. So it's got both rolled into one. And this helps add a little bit of warmth, distortion, and bring out some character in the guitar as well. So we'll start with it bypassed and flick it on and you can hear the difference it makes. So that adds quite a bit of warmth and character there. And you have two tubes here, A and B, so you can select how much is going through each one. And then you have this tone filter here as well. So that affects the frequency range affected by the saturation. Then you also have this tape setting, 15 IPS, 30 IPS. So you have all of these rolled into one and you can adjust them all to taste. Now let's see how that sits alongside the drums. So if I turn on my drum group here, that's just the kick so far. Okay, so the drum samples that we're working with to start, like the loop, are very nice samples on their own, but it definitely needs a bit of work to shape the mix. So again, on this kick, we have this EQ. So you can see we're just trying to shape the lower end, roll off that high end to leave space for other things, and we have a little bit of an attack here. So we can see how that kick sounds with and without the EQ. That's on and off. So you can see it's just tightening it a little bit, getting rid of a little bit of the unnecessary sound. And if we move on to the snare, we have another EQ. 
and then we also have this compression and so we can have a look at the compression for the first time so again it's a very simple basic compressor just the standard thratio, uh, thratio, threshold and ratio as well as attack and release controls and it is a vintage compressor and what is really interesting about this particular compressor is it is quite a slow one is what i've noticed with all their compression so you can set this attack you know really quite slow 500 milliseconds uh, i had it around three or four millisecond mark and the release uh the slowest the release can be is 50 milliseconds so yeah really really uh slow release there you can get up to really quite high release times and that also has an rms feature you can also switch between analog and digital here so at the moment i have it on analog peak and we can have a listen to how that sounds as well so we'll start with a bypass and we'll bring it in and maybe if we listen alongside the mix you can have a little bit of a better idea of the effect that's having and now we can have a look at a new plugin with the drum group so they have this e channel which i think is mostly designed as a mastering tool but it's really useful for just applying group equalization and compression also has this de effect which here i'm sort of using as this way to tame the high end of the hi-hats so maybe slightly unorthodox but i was just experimenting a little bit with different ways to use these plugins and we can listen to the full drum group here uh, we'll do is we'll not show the elements we haven't shown yet and if we bypass okay so we can keep moving on so the bass had all of the eq the compression and the tube tape on it and so for this one we can just show how the bass line sounded before anything was applied and then the difference that these three made we'll solo the bass and we'll bypass them all and then bring them in slowly really livening up the sound there for sure. So the next thing to look at is this guitar track here. And so this was recorded live. Uh, I almost said acoustically, not acoustic, but it was recorded with live with an actual instrument that's the only non-MIDI element. And so it's useful to see how the plugins sound on that, on a more organic recording. Uh, and so we are looking here as well at a slightly new plugin again, this one is the retro vox so of course it's designed as a vocal effect but i'm using it on the guitar because i mean there's no real reason that you'd have to only restrict it to vocals and it's worth sort of testing the limits and capabilities of these things so it's got a gate built in which i'm not using in this particular instance but it's a useful part of any vocal effect chain and it's got a compressor on it and it's got these tone controls that allow you to shape the amount of bass and treble so in this one i was driving up the treble i actually had a octave pedal on the guitar playing an octave down adding some beefiness and it, it got a bit muddy as you'll be able to hear so we're having the, that feature on and then it's got a little bit of vinyl distortion and some other uh, mixing effects here so let's just have a listen with this bypass i'll turn it on bypass it and then we'll bring it in and you can hear what difference this retro vox has we'll listen to it alongside the drums and 
Bridges Bypass. There you go, quite a big difference already. Now if we bring in this EQ and this compressor, same as what we looked at before but with different settings obviously, let's see again how all that sounds. We'll bring in the bass as well. Okay, there we go. So uh, that is already, we've gotten through quite a few of the effects. The other ones are mostly mastering effects. You know, on this synth and this chime layer that we have, we only have EQs on both of those. So nothing we haven't seen already. But before we get into the mastering chain that I've set up, we can also point out that all of these parameters on all these plugins are easily automatable, which is really useful. So you can see here, if I open up this EQ menu, you can see all those parameters. Now to have a look at the mastering chain. So uh, I do have a channel effects on this as well. So adding a little bit of frequency shaping, a little bit of compression. We have another equalizer here, not doing anything too drastic of course on the mastering chain slightly wider bands as well but a really useful one to look at here is the multi-band compressor which is a fantastic tool to have included in a bundle like this because multi-band compression is such an important tool and there are many different ways to use it i mean you can use multi-band compression and dynamic eqs which are Another side of the same coin to try and solve specific harsh frequencies were on a particular track you could you know i've used it on basses to try and level out the low end of live bass recordings but it's also obviously used in mastering a lot so again i just have it uh, trying to even out some of the bass and then we also have it impacting these middle frequencies a little bit as well so you can hear what it sounds like uh, to have it bypass and then bring in the multi-band compression and then the final plugin that we're going to look at in the session here is the maximizer and so the maximizer is really useful obviously as a limiter and a mastering tool to make sure that you're hitting the volume levels that you want so we can set a ceiling set a release time and then of course we can also have to set the threshold to determine how much limiting we're going to apply to this There you go so we quickly skimmed through the mastering a little bit there and you can have a taste of how the maximizer was boosting the sound and now let's just play through the track in full and you can let me know your thoughts There we have it, uh, 
Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed the demo track and I hope you go and check out Nomad Factory's Essential Studio Suite and the essential plugins they have there to get started with mixing and mastering. I've been Rain with Audio Plugin Deals and I'll see you in the next one.